Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Cooking with Linux. This is Marcel Gagné, and uh, today, uh, today we're going to do a special on uh, Commodore 64. <laughs> Yes, indeed, we're going to run Commodore 64 basic code on this thing, okay? Well, not just basic code, we're going to play games as well, but let's just, let's just, oops, let's just write something here. Print, hello, whoops, hello world, because, you know, that's the, that's the typical, uh, you know, first thing that you're supposed to print, and then I'm going to say run, hello world, there you go, Commodore 64, We'll come back in a few minutes to play some games. But the first thing you want to know is, how do I run a Commodore 64 computer on my Linux desktop? And this is what we're going to do today. All right, sit tight, grab yourself a glass of wine, and come back, and I'll show you what to do. All right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your hands on Vice. Vice is the versatile Commodore emulator. And guess what? It doesn't just do Commodore 64. It does Commodore 128. It does Commodore Pet. It does all sorts of cool Commodore things, okay? So just, just know that it's not the only thing that it can do, which is why, of course, it's called the versatile Commodore emulator. All right, so you're going to want to download this sucker from the SourceForge site. Uh, the vice-emu uh, download. Uh, you can also go to the uh, vice-emu uh, website, which is over here, if you want to get additional information on how this works. And uh, runs on a whole variety of platforms, but of course it emulates all sorts of different Commodore-type systems. So anyway, um, it's available for, like I said, a whole bunch of different distributions, but I'm going to show you what you need to do under Linux. Now, the thing that, the reason that we're going to take a little bit of time trying to figure this one out is this, okay? There is a kernel file, there are binary files, which typically don't ship with uh, Linux distributions uh, for the Commodore 64 emulator. So if you actually download this directly from your, uh, from your, uh, and actually you can do this, by the way, if you want, like, uh, let's just go over here and say, uh, I'm going to just, I'm leaving this open for a second, but let me show you what. Okay. Uh, new tab, big screen. All right. If I go apt uh, hyphen cache, uh, cache search, um, and I go vice, you're going to find out that it is actually a vi Whoa! <laughs> there it is at the bottom there. Apparently, there are an awful lot of things that have got the word vice in them. Advice, device. Anyway, uh, down right at the bottom there where it says Commodore v Vice Commodore Emulator. If you take a look at that, the version isn't all that old. It's like version 3.0 on there, but it doesn't include any of those uh, binary, uh, necessary binary files that actually allows you to run this thing. You have to go back and shop for it and so forth. So I'm going to show you how you build this thing. You build this thing, first of all, by, like I said, downloading this. It's not that complicated. And then you extract it like this. And you wind up with the very latest and greatest. And by the way, all those files that you're going to need, the kernel files I'm talking about, for every conceivable device. Oh, holy cow, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff. Anyway, trust me, it's all there, okay? It's all there. You don't need to go looking for it. All right, you're going to just go type dot slash configure. You're going to need to have the, um, whoops, let me try that again. Dots. Whoops. I have to get into the folder. <laughs> Let's try that again, shall we? All right. Dot slash configure. Not terribly complicated. It's going to go out there and make sure that your build environment is ready to go. And uh, so we're going to let it do its thing. Uh, check for every little thing that's necessary. You'll probably want to know that I already made sure that I have everything here. So I have the build essentials. I have the necessary libraries. You may need your... I mean, I don't know what you're going to have or not have on your system. But let's just say that you may have to go looking for one thing or two. But basically, it's a uh, dot slash config. Figure. And when it's all done here, oops, we need to check for yet another group of things. Very exciting. Now, th ah, there we go. So we're all set. We're all set to go. So we just type make and uh, we sit back and we watch all the excitement happening. So this thing is going to get built in the background. Um, and at this point, frankly, you could run off and grab something to drink something to munch on depending on how fast your system is or you know how much uh, how much energy this thing's got running in the background um, it may take a while for all this magic to happen so 
So at this point, I'm not going to keep you holding on here. Go off, go do something, grab something to eat. I'll just sort of quickly jump ahead in the video so that you don't have to watch all this stuff. And um, we'll come back and see what happens in a couple of minutes. All right, and just like that, we are done. Now, if you want to build this thing into a package, and you'll notice you've got, uh, take a look at the devices there, VIC-20, Commodore 64, Commodore 128, all that good stuff. If you actually want to build this into a package that you can use on your system, you would do this one, sudo, C-H-E, whoops, E-C-K, install. So sudo, check install, make sure you've got check install added as a package. And I'm going to put my super secret password there. And then at that point, I would just continue and it would build a, um, a deb package that would then be installed. And that way I could easily upgrade it later on when time goes on. And uh, that's what you would do. You would just let it go ahead and let it build the package. Um, I'm going to just stop it right here. I mean, uh, you can modify these things. You can go ahead and do it yourself. There we go. We're building the package, but I'm stopping it here. All right, now we could be anywhere else at this point. We don't actually have to be in the, uh, in the directory, especially if we've done the install on it. Uh, you could also, if you wanted to, do a sudo make install and just let it happen that way, but we're not going to do that. We've already installed the package doing the uh, check install, uh, which is why I didn't do it a second time. And there are a whole bunch of different things that you can run here. One of them is uh, x64. x64 will actually uh, bring up the uh, Commodore 64 emulator, which you see there, but... But, and this is kind of cool too, by the way, you can also go X128 um, and X128. Oh, there we go. A Commodore 128 emulator. Isn't that cool? You wind up with a Commodore 128 emulator as opposed to a Commodore 64 emulator. Uh, I'll just, uh, I will just close that one there. Yes, I really want to quit. Uh, now, once I've got my Commodore 64 emulator, and remember, I mean, I, I can I can run uh, XPET, I can run X128, I can run X64. This one here is the Commodore 64 because that's the one I wanted to go to. I'm going to show you one other thing before we go on here, okay, which is kind of interesting. There were a lot of games, you might recall, that existed for this thing, and I found this site here, coolrom.com. I'm going to pretend I've I have no way to tell. I'm going to pretend that it's all legit and above board. How's that? And if you go to ROMs there, you'll see there are ROMs for a whole variety of other things. And maybe we'll talk about other types of games at some other point, okay? But we'll talk about some of those other things. But the one we're interested in is Commodore 64. And look at that. We've got a whole bunch of different games here that you can download. You can search by them. Uh, most of these don't have uh, screenshots. But hopefully, if you were doing this at one point, playing games like I was way back when, when I had a Commodore 64, then some of these will mean something to you. Like, uh, for instance, Bubble Bobble. Okay, Bubble Bobble. Um, so if you wanted to download, say, that one, for instance, we'll just use that one. You'd go over here, and then there's a description. You click the download link, and the magic happens. You wind up with your, uh, you wind up with your game. Now, once you've downloaded it and extracted a game, so you've got that, uh, you would click up here, and then uh, you would, uh, sorry, you would, so there are a whole bunch of settings. One of them you can right-click, or rather left-click, and that lets you change a whole whack of different settings. You can also left-click, and left-click has things like joystick settings, okay? And in my case, I want to, I wanted to have the joystick to be uh, the numpad. So let's make the joystick the numpad, okay? That will be... Um, let me see, I'll do that again. Joystick number one, and there we go, numpad. I did do it. Good stuff. All right, excellent. So now I'll do an Alt-T, which is how you load something on the tape. So I'm going to attach a tape image with Alt-T, and I'm going to scroll way down here until I get to... Uh, until I get to uh, games. There we go. Games bubble bobble dot tap. So I wind up with a dot tap file, which I click on and then I click auto start. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Here we go. Found bubble bobble and now searching blah blah blah. So I don't know if you remember the good old bad days of computers, but some of this stuff actually takes a few minutes. <laughs> So it is loading the game into memory. And in a few seconds here, we're going to have our game ready to go. All right, there we go. The game has begun. Press 1 or 2 to begin. And uh, the volume seems awfully high here. Maybe I'll turn that down a little tiny bit. Ah! 
fabulous journey. You get the idea, because obviously I don't remember how to play this. <laughs> I should spend a little time learning how to play this game. But the bottom line is, uh, there were keypad controls that you need to be able to set. So you're in the middle of a game, and obviously there were joysticks that you used for this sort of thing. So keyboard settings, keyboard mapping style, you can decide symbolic mapping, positional, um, keyboard layout style. Obviously I'm using the standard one here, but of course the joystick control, mouse emulation, uh, uh, enable mouse grab M. Anyway, there's a whole pile of settings here that you can uh, play with to try to get these things working the way that you want them to work. Anyway, that's it. So go out there, find yourself some games, uh, relearn how to program in Commodore 64 Basic. Um, have fun, and I'll talk to you later. If you like what I'm doing here on Cooking with Linux, please make sure that you subscribe. Give me some thumbs up. Share it with people. Tell your friends, your family, your neighbors, your enemies. Tell everyone and tell them that, you know, they should be checking out uh, Cooking with Linux. So let me see. There we go on my Commodore Pet emulator. Simple little program. Hello, world. Subscribe, thumbs up, share, and uh, see you next time. <laughs> Well, apparently I need to correct that error. Anyway, see you next time on Cooking with Linux. Marcel Gagné, out.